If you guys are looking to raise capital for your firm and you haven't heard about a rolling fund, it is an absolute game changer, guys. If you're looking to raise capital for your firm, whether it's a traditional fund or a rolling fund, I'm gonna to explain to you in today's video why you should consider a rolling fund over a traditional fund. My name is Akil Jabbar and welcome to another video. I'm the GP and Managing Director at Horizon Capital, where we help companies from 1 million to 5 million ARR exit, scale, and take their business to the next level. We've now helped over seven companies in our portfolio grow exponentially by working with us. And that's what we're planning to do with our upcoming rolling fund, which we're planning to roll out. And it's been an absolute game changer when it comes to the investment space. Now, we're a micro private equity firm. We're not a traditional private equity firm where they go out and raise a, a complete fund and go and buy big companies. We're at a smaller space where our companies we're buying are generally around, you know, anywhere between $1 million to about $10 million in valuation when we're buying these companies. We looked at different options when we wanted to buy our companies. I want to share with you guys why you guys should consider and look at the advantages of maybe considering a rolling fund if you're looking to start up your own fund versus a traditional fund, which everybody's more accustomed to. So in both cases, when you're looking to raise a fund, you're going to go out and you're going to try to find investors. And these investors are known as your limited partners. Okay, and then in both cases, you need to find investors who are gonna put capital into the fund. And with those funds, you're gonna go out and buy companies, right? So that's pretty straightforward. But the difference between the two is that with a rolling fund, it's not a one-time fundraising process. With a rolling fund, you're actually getting commitments every single quarter, it becomes a quarterly subscription. When investors contribute, they can come in every single quarter, they can reduce their amount, they can stop their amount, they can increase their amount every single quarter, they can adjust their investment and input based on the total pool or the total pie of the fund that you create. Now, you guys are probably familiar with a normal fund, okay? And how that works is you're gonna start, look, I'm gonna raise a single fund, let's call it $100 million, okay? I wanna go out and find $100 million across a broad range of investors. And maybe I'm gonna go out and create that fund, which is gonna be super expensive, a bunch of legal work, documentation, fund structures, accounting work is gonna cost you tons of money. It's not abnormal for you know these fees to add up to be over $100,000, if not even more, sometimes even two, $300,000 if you're raising a $100 million fund. Let's, let's kind of quickly talk about what are the differences between a rolling fund and a traditional fund, okay? So like I said, the first one is the process of raising the fund. With a traditional fund, you're gonna do it one time, okay? You're gonna find that $100 million, you're gonna decide on raising that $100 million, and you're gonna build out all your documentation, the process, the legal work, the structure. And once you have that structure set up, okay, you spent $100,000, $200,000 upfront. Now you're gonna go out and try to raise money for that single fund. So every single LP or investor that comes in is gonna to subscribe to that fund. So until you reach that $100 million, you're gonna continue raise, 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 add money to that pool until you reach that cap. So there's a cap here, $100 million, that's the pie you're working with and you're gonna keep adding, let's say, half a million dollars, $250,000, a million dollars. So you, let's say you're gonna have at least, let's say, 100 different investors, okay? Different LPs into that overall fund. So let's say each of these are putting a million dollars and that's your minimum, okay? These are high net worth individuals who are coming in for this fund or family offices or fund of funds or pension funds. So you, let's say they come in for a million dollars each, you're gonna have 100 pieces of pie to share across the $100 uh, million dollar fund. Okay, once you're done, that's it. You now, that, that fund becomes closed and that is it. Those 100 people are the only people who can come in and they can't get out until the fund is complete. That's number one. The difference is now, when you talk about a rolling fund, it happens on a continuous basis. So let's say I wanna to decide to raise $100 million. I don't need to do that all in the first month or the first year. I can have 50 investors put in $100,000 for $5 million every single quarter for the first quarter. So first, million, uh, first quarter, I get $5 million. The second quarter, I decide to find 50 more investors. So now the first 50 are gonna add another 5 million and I got 50 more who are gonna add another 5 million. So quarter two comes, I now have 15 million. And see the pie increases over time, but it doesn't all have to be at the same time. And you can deploy that capital at any time. Okay, so let's say in the first quarter, I had that $5 million raised 
and I go and buy a company for $5 million, okay? Next quarter comes around, I have that extra 10 million coming in, I can sit on it, I can wait for the right deal, or I can invest that 5 million, and the shares adjust every single time the more investors come in. The beauty about a rolling fund is you can have over 250 investors into this overall pool. So over time, you don't need people coming in for a million dollars, they can come in for as little as $5,000 a quarter. The nice thing is this opens up a door to a lot more investors. So people who don't have a million dollars, who don't have $500,000 to invest into your fund, you can open it up to people who have $5,000 a quarter to invest and maybe over a year they come in for $20,000 as the fund grows, as the performance grows, and more and more companies are acquired in that fund. That's the beauty about a rolling fund over a traditional fund. Second part is the overall flexibility for investors. Okay, this is huge. When you're investing in a traditional fund, an LP or the limited partner is gonna come in and once they come in for that capital, they're gonna to have to stay until they get back their capital, until the fund is closed, until they distribute all the profits or the companies have been sold off, acquired, shut down, whatever. So that's a typical commitment of anywhere between five, seven or even 10 years. With a rolling fund, you're super flexible. Every quarter that comes around, you can decide, look, this quarter I'm gonna come in for 5,000. Let's see how it goes next quarter. You know what, I've got 20,000 more. I'm gonna come in for another 20,000. Or maybe the quarter after that, I don't like how things are going. I'm gonna withdraw that 20,000 that I put in last quarter. Okay, and that, that's the beauty about it. It's so flexible. People can come in and out and sell uh, their shares of the, of the overall portfolio and the percentage just adjust based on that. So that flexibility is huge for any investor who wants to invest in a rolling fund. And the last point of what I wanna share of the differences is the fees involved, okay? Like I said, in a traditional fund, the fees are insane. They're looking at, uh, you know, anywhere 100,000, 200,000 dollars just to get that overall structure set up for a traditional fund. Now with a rolling fund, you can do this all directly through Angel. If you haven't heard about angel.co, you can check out their rolling fund uh, page and their management fee is only 0.15%. A traditional private equity firm, what they're charging is 1%, 2% just on the initial fee, sometimes even 3%, okay? So they're charging 0.15% over 10 years. And if they bring in, they also market your, your uh, rolling fund to their investors. And if they bring in any investors, they're gonna take 5% carry, which is your, your fee over the, the performance of the, the entire fund, over the, as you acquire companies, um, they're gonna charge 5% of any investors that they bring in. If you bring in your investors into that pool or that, that rolling fund, they don't charge any fees on that. So you can imagine the amount of time and money. It's almost 90% cheaper to go through Angel and a rolling fund than a traditional fund. 90%, okay? The legal, the accounting, the, the fundraising, the time, the amount of work that's going through because they already have the structure in place. So all you have to do is build that, that kind of, uh, once you get approved, all you have to do is build the, the actual fund, set it up, and then you go out and market it and find investors to subscribe directly through Angel. And they handle all the paperwork on the back end for you, which is huge time commitment and a huge time save for, for any, uh, anyone who's ever raised money for a fund before. So one thing you're probably thinking is like, as me as an investor, if I'm coming in for $5,000, why would I want, you know, 100 other investors in this, in this business or in this fund? Um, and you know, as the fund kind of grows, I get diluted every single time. But the beauty of it is your risk is, is dramatically reduced when you have 100 different investors. So you're only putting 5,000, let's say of 100 different investors. So you only have 1% of the overall pie, yes. But that $5,000 of a bigger pie is a lot more valuable and a lot less risky for you versus coming in for 5,000 and you only have, let's say 10 other investors and you own 10% of that company. Okay, so you have to look at it from a risk reward perspective. You wanna look at it from a bird's eyes view so that even though your pie might be smaller as the, the pie grows, the value of that pie grows as they, you acquire bigger and better and more companies into that portfolio. So you want the pie to actually grow because then you can actually go and deploy it you get more capital back in, you get cash flow back in, and it continues to grow for everybody involved. So it's a win-win situation over time for all investors. If you guys haven't seen this already, go on Twitter. I highly suggest it. a lot of investors, a lot of GPs are actually raising their entire funds now directly on Twitter. They're just posting it and marketing them on Twitter, and they're raising millions of dollars literally in weeks. So the question is, should I be investing in a rolling fund? Absolutely. Okay, if, you if you're considering a traditional fund, as an LP or a rolling fund, I highly recommend a, a rolling fund because it's a lot cheaper for you. Uh, the fees are a lot lower and you're a lot more flexible uh, for you to get in and out versus tying up your capital for so long. Now, obviously, if you're comparing to public markets, this is a different, different, completely different strategy. This is mostly for a small cap or mid market companies, which we're, you know, we're focused on at Horizon Capital. We buy small cap 
uh, investments, you know, and typically under $5 million. So this works really, really well. Um, but if you're looking into publicly traded companies, that's a different ball game, which I, I won't get into. And just a reminder, guys, this is not investment advice. I'm not a registered investor. Take this at your own discretion. I'm just here to teach you and, and show you guys the comparison between the two options. If you guys have raised a rolling fund in the past, I would love to hear your experience. What's been your thoughts? What's been your journey? What have you seen as the pros and cons of both? Please comment below. Make sure to subscribe to this video. And thank you guys for watching.